Yeah, I'm from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> you remember Mr. Bush, right? It's nice to be with all of you. My name's Yusuf. Can you say Yusuf? I got it right first time. My wife still pronounces it useless. <laughs> I think it's a speech of peppermint. Anyhow, we're here today, and there's a reason for that. Just as there's a reason for everything. I'm drinking coffee for a reason. No? You have a pen for a reason. You enrolled in this school for a reason. Right or wrong? Everybody had a reason for what they did. If, this is a if question, but if you look around the universe with a telescope, if you did that, what would you most likely observe? Putting aside, you know, nomenclatures for each thing, just say in general, what are those things you're looking at to the telescope? What are they? Stars. Huh? Stars. Um, use use a, a more scientific word. Orbs. You know it's an orb? A round thing. You know, like an egg or things around. Yeah, right. Circle. Ball. There are circles. And they go in orbits, right? Orbit coming from that center. Everything you see through the telescope has some kind of a design to it. And it's in motion. And it's following a pattern. Not only is each one of them doing something, but it's also in relation to other things, like planets going around stars, moons going around planets. You've seen it. We've all seen it. But even... The solar system is moving and going. The sun turns, stars turn. These solar systems make up galaxies. <coughs> galaxies make up the Milky Way. And even that, they say, is moving all the time. It's never stationary. It keeps moving, keeps moving, keeps moving. For an atheist, he'll say, oh, well, it happened by chance. You like that? It happened by chance. Right? <laughs> <laughs> then, if you look under the microscope, the microscope, what do you see? Molecules. What's the shape of molecules? Triangles? Square box? Huh? What are they? Orbs. Round orbs. True or false? And they tell us, scientists tell us, these same atheists tell us that these molecules are made up of, you know, it's works both ways, but I have a mic and we don't, so. <coughs> made up of atoms. Atoms. And these are round, moving around. And an atom is made out of <laughs> electrons, <laughs> protons. Neutrons. You didn't know I was going to turn you into science class, did you? It's all right, there's a pop quiz in five minutes to get ready. But these supposedly, I never saw them by the way, but supposedly those things are also round and they go in orbits. Yes or no? Yes. Now, think. A telescope is an optic assist. A microscope is a huge optic assist so that we can observe these things. Without those optic assists, could we have guessed that the macro and the micro are almost identical in structure and design? Could we have guessed it? No. No way. So if you just look at those two things, would you conclude that there was a pattern there? Would you conclude that there was some kind of design? Or would you say, <laughs> accident? Hmm? 
By the way, usually I take inventory. I didn't do that today, so I should do it now. Give you a break while you think about that. Do we have any Muslims with us? Raise your hand if you're a Muslim. Okay. Let's go the other way. Is anybody here that's not Muslim? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How you like being surrounded by all these terrorists? He's got Muslims. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I give it away. <coughs> it is strange in a way when you think about it that we have, you and I know this, we have one of the best solutions for the world's problems today, and yet we're trying to defend, defend Islam against the accusations that Islam is against to start with. Is it amazing? And I attribute that to what? Are you lost? Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I think I am. But anyway, the good news is we find our way. We find our way because Allah he gives something called Hidayah, guidance. And that's what we really want to talk about today. We want to be sure, before we leave here, that our guests, who are not Muslim, understand what Islam really offers as a solution to life's problems. And The idea that I'm talking on, of course, if you saw the little flyers that they had out, it says the purpose. What is life's purpose? Why are we here? What are we doing? What is it all about? And all of us, we're in the same kind of situation, in that we're looking for answers. Every one of us is looking for answers. Some of us feel like we've got the answers. Some don't have a clue. And in between, there's doubt. Does that sound about right? Did I sum it up pretty good? Regardless if you call it some kind of ideology or faith group, it still comes back to this thing that we're asking questions. Even before we looked through the telescope and the microscope, we came up with some questions. And the biggest question of all is a personal question what the heck am I doing here? Why am I here? What is this all about? And when it comes in the most crucial times, usually in the teen years, the teen years, from about, I'm going to, uh, let me round it out to about 10 years spread, 12 and a half to about 22 and a half. Great in death. Let's, let's put that in there. And those who wear these crucial things will come up. We start going, oh, well, wait a minute, hold on. What are my parents trying to tell me? I don't buy that. Let me, let me look at some other stuff here. The rebellion, the revolution. Now, I'm not talking about Northern Africa, hold on. <laughs> I'm talking about the revolution in our lives that we go through. It comes about this time. Now, there are also other times when we will face this or look into this real serious. And that's when there's a critical thing that happens, takes place in our life. Somebody's diagnosed with cancer. I will it out. Someone has a dear relative who passes away unexpectedly. Or even, you know, just out of old age, we still have these questions confront us. When we attend a funeral, you go to a janazia, and how do you feel? What do you think about in a janazia? Huh? You're not thinking about party, hardy, marty at the music joint, right? No. And that's for anybody. Not again, I'm not talking about faith groups, I'm not talking about ideologies, I'm just talking about how do you feel? How do you feel when you're at a funeral? You're thinking, is that going to be me? And you'll say it like that. You won't say, for most people, they're not going to say, I know I'm going to die, I'm going to be there. We, we won't. It's the most obvious fact of life. The most obvious fact of life is what? Huh? Death. This, that goes without saying. You have to admit, if you're born, you're going to die. Yet human beings spend a lot of their life and their effort and their so-called purpose to do what? To avoid death. There's a Native American Indian tribe that I heard about 
This is their religion, their belief, not ours. I'm just telling you how they reversed it. That when a baby was born, they would mourn, Oh, you poor soul, you've come into the world for trials and tribulations. Oh, oh, oh. And they would grieve for a newborn baby. And when somebody would die, they'd say, Ah, oh, look at this. Oh, you're escaping from this, and now you've gone on to the greater life, wherever that is. The reverse of what we do. We have a baby, hey, and somebody dies, oh. <laughs> so different people do look in a different way, but all of us acknowledge, you come in, you're going out. In the Quran, Allah says, Kulu nafsin Every soul will taste that. You can't escape it. And we know that. <coughs> By the way, from our guests who are not Muslim, do you have any Christians? Anybody's a Christian? Three, four? So we have some other brands. Off brand, maybe. I don't know. Anyway. But I'm teasing. Don't get excited. <laughs> In Christianity, one of the things that in the Protestant religion that I was in, and not all of them say the same thing, but we used to refer to a book called the Book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. And in it, in English, it said, For God so loved the world that he sent him Jesus, that said, Son of God, as what? as a, a Savior. Because it says whoever believes in Him, they're not going to die. Now that's a good sales tool. That's great. I mean, because that's the one thing everybody's afraid of, right? I don't want to die. Do you want to die? No. Not in no hurry for that. So if you said, well, you just believe this and you won't die. But you'll live forever. Everlasting life. Sounds good. That was 2,000 years ago. And every single preacher that said it is dead. <laughs> According to them, even Jesus died. What does that mean? He didn't believe in it? So it makes you think, wait a minute. What have we got here? What's going on? And I know some other religions that make certain claims about life and afterlife. So when people come to us, Jack and I have been I'm not traveling together for a long time doing dawah and uh, the call to Islam in the prisons and, and uh, various institutions as well as just in the streets. But one of the things that people will ask us, what kind of plan of salvation do you have? What do you have? What can you guarantee us? If we say we want to be a Muslim, what can you guarantee for us? You know for sure we can have it. <laughs> so, well, can you promise us heaven? Well, not really, not as a Muslim. But we can promise you hell. <laughs> That's real easy, isn't it? That's simple. We believe in both places, but we didn't say anybody's got to get out of jail free card. I don't know if you know Monopoly. Or if you know what's uh, like a gold card. You know, we don't have any gold card. You can just throw it down and charge my sins to somebody else. It doesn't work. In fact, we're all going to be very responsible on the Day of Judgment. But I want to come back to our topic, this purpose. And what is our purpose? Once we've acknowledged that there really is a creator, a sustainer, we've acknowledged that. And that's where you start with your doubt. When you're talking to people, you start with that. Don't worry about anything before you hit the logical point. Because otherwise you're going to argue about mute, uh, moot points. Moot points. Such as, somebody say, well, why do you have to wipe over the top of your sock when you make wubu? <laughs> this is your question? <laughs> I mean, we're talking about after here. We're talking about life. We're talking about death. And you want to know about me putting water on top of my sock? So we want to avoid getting into those kind of, you know, <coughs> how come some women cover half their face and the other ones cover all their face? Well, somebody asked my wife that in the grocery store not long ago. You know what she told me? Because she covers her face. I said, why do you cover your face? She said, I don't have any lips. <laughs> She's from Texas too, okay? By the way, try to say lips without moving your lips. Yeah, right. All right. What is our purpose? Why are we here? 
So instead of the logic thing, if there is a creator, if something put all of this into motion, started these orbits, started this going on, then it becomes easier to understand where everything really came from. It's not an accident. You didn't just go, and everything fell out. One example, I don't know if you've seen any of our stuff on YouTube or any of our websites, but if I took a glass, a water glass, and walk out here to the pavement, to the cement, right? And I throw it down, what'll happen? Yeah, it makes jump, right? Is there going to be anything you can use out of there after that? Huh? No. Not really. It won't break into little small glasses, will it? No. So whenever you have an accident to take place like that, something by chance, a random occurrence, you wind up with chaos, disorder. You don't come out with something like the universe that we see. You don't. And this should be obvious, except to somebody who does not want to believe. And they will keep coming up with excuse after excuse after excuse why they don't believe. But for the one who's accepted, there must be a creator. And that, by the way, is still over 90% of all the humans on Earth. Did you know that? How many of you heard about a word called fitra? Fitra. Raise your hand if you heard this word before. Okay. This is an Arabic word. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu peace be upon him, he said, every child is born on the fitra of Islam. Now, that's 1400 years ago. This week. I'm so tickled to tell you this, really. This week, I found it in a newspaper article, the scientists have discovered babies believe there is a creator. All babies believe there's got to be some kind of creator. I put the article on our website, it's called islamnewsroom.com, you really need to check it out. It's only going to be up a couple more days, we get new, more news items. But check that out. Babies believing there's a God. And they tell you the test that they ran to show it and prove it. Amazing? Not to a Muslim. We already knew that 1400 years ago. All babies are already believing God and they're in the right way with Him when they're born. So it means we were all starting out perfect. Until we got old enough to start making choices, right? And then the Prophet said, it's the parents that will raise them up to be whatever religion they become. Or lack of it. Now, I want to come back to our topic again. What is the purpose? Why are we here? What's it all about? And how can that help us? Once I know it, how will that help me? In the Quran, Allah says, وَمَا قَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا يَعْبَدُونَ and this is the Surah al Dariya, chapter 51, verse 56. And that's where Allah tells us clearly what our purpose is. He said, I did not create the jinn and human beings except for ibadah. <coughs> ibadah, literally it means to be a slave or a servant. And for us as Muslims, we understand by keeping it in context, it means when we worship, we worship only the one who's worthy of worship, that would be the creator and the sustainer, not anything he created. We come to know from reading the Quran as Muslims that we were created for a serious purpose. Every one of us is born at a specific time and a place and a condition for a reason. And what we experience, those tests that we endure, all have a purpose. And what is that purpose? It is to recognize there really is God and to give Him His due, which is to worship Him without any partners. Now we can also mention Jews and Christians along with this because Allah told us in the Quran that He also commanded them the same thing. What that equal demon? Circle Bana, chapter 98 of the Quran. And Allah is telling us about the Ahl Kitab, the people before us, that they were not ordered anything more than this. Worship Allah alone without any partners. La ilaha illallah. 
and keep the religion pure for him. Don't mix it up with something else. Establish your worship, pay the charity, and this is the religion most clear. Once we know that, we're able to really move forward. Now, how will it help us in our life? Well, I don't know about you, but I have a tendency when I buy anything new, I don't know if you got a new iPad lately or some new uh, printer or computer, huh? I always want to just plug it in and go, you know? Turn it on. If it works, let's go. I'm not even going to read anything. Are you going to sit there and read a manual? I have a techie that works for me. He's weird. He reads manuals before he opens stuff up. That's weird. But it should be that we would do that, right? But we don't. But we have a manual. We have a manual, an operator's manual for our lives. And it is called the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Included in his Sunnah, by the way, is the Quran and his, his ways. You put those two together, you've got a clear picture of what you're supposed to do. Simple as that. Now, without elaborating too much on it, I want to tell you where you can get a lot more details. I know some of you have to run for class, and I don't want you to miss this, so I'll tell you where you can get the whole story. IslamTomorrow.com slash purpose. IslamTomorrow.com slash purpose. You get the whole story right there and help you put it together. There's another website that you can refer to called scienceislam.com and on that website you'll find a lot of questions with the answers. scienceislam.com you'll get the answers to the questions. And for those who want to know more about God, Allah, the website's called godallah.com These that I've just mentioned to you will really help you form a basis, not only for establishing a purpose, science and Islam will help you do that, understanding who this creator really is, God Allah will do that. But then, when you go to islamtomorrow.com slash purpose, it ties it together real nice. And now when you want to share Islam with others, the website's called shareislam.com. It also gives you the questions that you can rehearse yourself, read the answers to it, and it will help you, inshallah, to be able to better understand your purpose and how to convey that to other people. So the bottom line of our purpose, well, as a human being, is to acknowledge all the thanksgiving and praise are only to the one who created us, number one. And number two, share the message with others in a positive directive. And that's what we hope we just did right now. Now, they said that we're going to open up the question, the floor to questions, but I really don't have any. <laughs> I'm not going to get away with it anyway. Say it, Pat. I'm going to help you. Dr. Malafair, by the way, end of lecture, questions are up next.